Hey guys! Welcome back to another episode of What If. Today we're going to be doing What If Sunny Had Inherited Her Father's Anna's Powers. This one's been requested quite a bit along with powers for several other dragons. However, Sunny being an animist makes the most sense to me, not only because of her bloodlines, because by now I think we can safely say all tribes have the opportunity for it, but because of her temperament. Anyways, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into it. None of the dragons living in the cave realized Sunny was anything special for a long time. To be fair, neither did she. Sunny was a happy dragonette, and few things bothered her during her earliest years. However, as the dragonettes grew older and more dissatisfied with their situation, Sunny grew more and more distressed by this. The prophecy would entangle itself. She knew it would. It was destiny. Everyone needed to calm down and be nicer to each other in the meantime. Although nobody realized it at the time, the first time Sunny used her powers was when she and Clay were four years old. Sunny had gone to Clay's cave, looking for a scroll Starflight said he'd left in there. Instead, she'd found Clay, curled up on his ledge, snout hidden under his talons. "'What's wrong?' Sunny asked, scampering over and poking his big black claws with her own golden ones. "'Kestrel yelled at me again,' he said morosely, "'and hit me really hard today.' Sunny frowned. "'I'm sorry,' she said. Do you want to come and read in the library with me in Starflight? No, Clay mumbled sulkily, turning to look away. Aw, Sunny said. Don't be sad. Come read with us. Clay looked back, a thoughtful expression on his face. I guess, he said, sounding a little less upset. Let's go, he said. Sunny was a little surprised at how quickly he changed his mind, but she did want him to feel better, so maybe it was okay. She scooped up the scroll she'd come for and bounced back to the library, Clay following slowly behind her. Webbs didn't get to make many important decisions when it came to the Dragonettes of Destiny. Sure, he was one of the three main caretakers, but Kestrel and Dune didn't like him, and Kestrel was stubborn. She got what she wanted and did what she wanted, so he just tried to be helpful and stay out of her way. But that being said, he noticed things over the years. Seemingly harmless phrases that Sunny would blurt, Stop being so mean, Glory. Starflight's just trying to explain it better. Or playfully whined, Clay, share the last roasted boar. Or sometimes, just let us play a little longer. Either Sunny was very persuasive, or... Webbs had grown up hearing horror stories of animus dragons. Even animus dragons in the very royal family who had gone insane. Or at the least abused their powers. He began to suspect Sunny might be an animus. Sandwings had had them before, after all. And wouldn't it make sense for the prophecy dragonets to have special powers? He already knew Tsunami was royalty, and Starflight would eventually have his Nightwing powers. Maybe they were all special like that. But in the meantime, Sunny was growing used to having her way. He needed to explain to her what animus powers were, and how dangerous they could be before she made costly mistakes. When Sunny was five and a half, Webbs pulled her aside one day and told her she had magic. At first she was pleased. How wonderful! If she had magic, it meant she could fulfill the prophecy. But it comes with a terrible cost, Webb said. Every time you cast a spell, you... You become less of a dragon. You lose your mind, he said. But I wouldn't do bad things, Sunny said, tilting her head. I could stop the war. Maybe, Webb said slowly. But... The magic makes you a little more insane each time you use it. You must be very careful and only use it when you must, and never to hurt another dragon, especially one of your friends. I won't, she said quietly, awed by the danger and the magnitude of her own power. And let's keep this to ourselves, he added. Kestrel and Dune wouldn't react well, he winced. I can tell my friends, though, right? she asked. No, not yet, Webb said hurriedly. Why? she whined. Think of it this way, he said tactfully. You have special powers. You wouldn't want them to be sad that they don't have them, right? Well, she said thoughtfully, I guess not. I don't want them to be sad ever. Good, Webb said. Then let's keep it a secret. Just you and me. And don't use your powers just yet, he smiled. Sunny was very careful not to accidentally use her powers. Webbs had told her that whatever she said would happen, so she learned to talk carefully. But sometimes, sometimes she really wanted to. 
Sometimes her friends were sad or fighting or Kestrel was extra mean or Dune was extra unhelpful and Sunny knew that she could fix that now. It was, it was her whole purpose. Sunny existed because of the prophecy which was going to fix the world and she had to start somewhere and nobody was more important than her friends. Plus, everyone wanted to know who their parents were. It would be so easy. Sunny sat in the library sometimes, a blank scroll unrolled in front of her. Show me everyone's parents, she would say. It would be so simple. But she didn't want everyone to be sad she had powers they didn't, so she waited. Their sixth hatching day was particularly bad. Kestrel was grumpy all day, stomping and snarling and shouting. She slammed Glory into a wall during training way harder than she should have, and the Rainman was limping when she slunk away to their sleeping cave. And Kestrel burned clay again, and Dune was refusing to answer Starflight's questions that day. Webbs just left, saying he was going to go hunting. The five of them ended up hiding in the sleeping cave with Glory, who was curled stiffly on her ledge, scales drifting gray and blue. Last Sunny checked, the sky hole was a dusky gray. Webbs would be back soon. She knew he didn't like being out in the dark. Nobody was really talking. Everyone was too sad. She heard the telltale sign of the boulder scraping as it rolled. Webbs must be coming back. Come on, Tsunami muttered. Let's go get dinner. Sunny followed. Starflight stayed curled up under Clay's wing, both offering and receiving comfort. As they walked to the front cave, Sunny turned an idea over in her mind. It was their sixth hatching day, and everyone was upset. Webbs had said never to use her magic, but he'd said never to do anything bad with it. Webbs never did anything anyways. What would he know? Would it really hurt to do one little spell, one teeny thing to make everyone feel better? On their hatching day? Sunny slid a glance over to Tsunami, who was dragging her claws sulkily. Even Tsunami was sad. Usually she just got angry. That decided it. When they got the talon full of weird birds from Webbs, Sunny let herself fall behind just a little and squinted at her birds. Make everyone feel better, she whispered. Heal Glory and Clay, and don't let them be sad. Hurrying, she caught up to Tsunami and made sure everyone got one of her birds when they got back to the room. The evening picked up after that, and they spent the night playing happily in the little cave, worries forgotten. After that, Sunny let herself make little spells. Only harmless ones, like stop Clay from being hurt when Kestrel trains him, enchant this scroll to be the one Starflight wanted but Dune didn't get, undo the charred overcooked taste on this pheasant because Glory hated the ashy taste even more than she already hated most of their food. With each spell she worked, she found it a little easier, and her friends were happier, even if it wasn't always real. Sunny worked really hard to keep everyone happy. Some nights it was easy to just mumble, everyone just be nice for once than to figure out the root of the issue and attack that instead. But in the end, maybe Webbs was right about keeping her powers a secret, because nobody was very pleased when they found out. It happened when a huge, grumpy, mean Nightwing came to their cave. He blew smoke and whined about everything. When he went to attack, Sunny didn't even think about it. She shouted, Stop! And the Nightwing froze, mid-air, teeth barred in a snarl. Everyone turned to look at her. Sunny swallowed, mouth suddenly dry. She turned back to Marosir. Go back to the floor, she gritted through her teeth. The Nightwing looked furious as his body moved to the floor. You're going to leave, she said, forcing her voice not to tremble. Go back to the Nightwings and tell them everything is fine here. You like all of us. Don't come back. And forget this ever happened. Marosir turned stiffly and walked toward the entrances, eyes curiously blank. Sunny thought, maybe, she should care. But Marosir deserved it. He would have hurt them, and they were the prophecy dragonets. He couldn't. She was only protecting them and their destiny. Everyone was looking at her. What was that? Kestrel hissed, tail lashing. You're an animus, Tsunami accused. Starflight was staring at her, eyes wide and awed. Do you really have magic? he asked. Everyone was talking at once. Have you done that before? Dune asked suddenly, voice hard. Have you enchanted any of us? Webb's head swung towards her. She swallowed. 
I... I... She hesitated. You have, Glory cried, voice accusing. She took a step back. What kind of spells? Was it like that? I told you not to, Webbs roared. You knew, Kestrel shouted, advancing on him. Everyone was so mad, they couldn't... Sunny didn't... Forget, she blurted. She didn't think about it, couldn't take it back, and realized she didn't want to. None of this happened. They all got that glazed look then, and Sunny couldn't find any feeling of guilt in herself. This was better. Nobody was upset now. She wouldn't let them be. Hey, she said softly, turning to Clay. Do you want to go play in the library? Uh, he said, looking around, eyes a little dazed. Sure, I guess. She hurried out of the cave, and Clay followed her. They didn't need to know. They wouldn't... She wouldn't let them. Sunny could secretly make sure everyone was happy. She could secretly use her magic to fulfill the prophecy. Nobody would know. They would all... They would all be nice and happy and safe. She would make sure of it. Eventually, when the time was right, the prophecy dragonettes leave the cave. By the time they're eight, Sunny is controlling many aspects of their lives. Otherwise, they aren't happy. She thinks that once they fulfill the prophecy, they'll be happy, and she won't have to change so many things in their memory and rearrange their thoughts so often. Getting rid of Kestrel had helped, after all. Replacing their memories of her with the new Kestrel had been one of her best ideas. But, Sunny found, it wasn't just them. It seemed like everyone was sad. Maybe... Maybe dragons just weren't meant to be happy. Maybe the world was too messy. And none of the queens cared. None of the princesses cared. So maybe... The prophecy wasn't about them, then. Maybe the prophecy was about... Her. Maybe she was the wings of power. She had powers, of course. She could make everyone happy. She could end the war. Sunny started small. She enchanted the Sky Wings to just be happy. Of course, their entire kingdom was too complicated for her to figure out, so they couldn't just keep running around and taking prisoners and dueling each other. So she simply enchanted them to not. To just stop moving and arguing and fighting. Sunny enchanted all the Sky Wings to fall asleep and have lovely dreams and to never wake up. Even if they weren't actually awake and experiencing happy things, they all thought they were. That was close enough. It was okay. But it was a big spell, and she felt something inside her crack when she did it. Sunny knew that whatever else she was going to do, she needed to act quickly. Webbs had warned her, so long ago, that her powers had a limit. She didn't feel any different. She wasn't evil or anything. She was the best! Sunny was fixing everything. She was stopping the war. She was getting rid of sadness and crankiness and mean mothers and bad mornings and all the bad things. But her powers would get tired, maybe. So Sunny needed to be fast. After making another spell so her friends would forget about the Sky Kingdom as they flew inland, Sunny put together her plan for the rest of the world in her head. She would do this. Her last spell. It would be perfect, so she never needed to do another one. She was going to fix everything. Forever. Sunny ends up at the Sandwing Palace. She convinced her friends to go there next. She made sure Burn wouldn't be around. Nobody bothered them when they entered. These were easy spells. She walked to the throne room and sat in the middle of the huge, arching room on the cool stone floor. What are we doing here? Starflight asked, dully. These days, his voice was less animated, probably because he didn't have as many questions. Sunny had always answered all his questions. This must mean he was happier. Don't worry, she said soothingly. You're about to find out. This will be the best. What do you mean? Tsunami asked, slowly. How? Hush, Sunny said. I'm thinking. Tsunami hushed. Sunny spoke her last spell. Inside the cavernous throne room, rock suddenly grew from the floors, walls, and ceiling. It changed color, twisting until it replicated the caves of their youth. Then it changed again. Sunlight shone through the stone, one cavern holding a huge garden, and another a lake with a burbling, cascading waterfall. It was paradise. Outside her little bubble of perfection, throughout the rest of Pyria, all seven tribes suddenly fell asleep. Ice wings dropped to the floor of their palace. Rainwings went slack in their hammocks. 
Mudwing settled into their bogs. The armies ground to a halt. The war was over. Back in the Sandwing Palace, inside a twisting growth of stone, Sunny's friends lived a dreamlike life. It was happy, calm, repetitive. Tsunami no wonder thought to escape. The confines of her new home were comfortable. Glory enjoyed long hours in the light of a sun she never looked up to try and locate. Clay and Starflight read in the garden or wrestled. And of course, Sunny, always curled in the middle of the cave system. The little dragon had a near magical calm about her. Her half-lidded eyes never moved, and she spent her days watching her friends, content to observe their happy, controlled, unchanging life. And that will wrap up today's episode! Basically, I just think Sunny would try to use her powers for good, trying to help alleviate the stress of growing up in such a cold environment. But I think as her soul grew more and more corrupted, she would eventually end up just dictating everyone's emotions, all while believing she was only helping. And in the end, everyone ends up right back where they started, trapped, unable to make any choices for themselves. In the end, they are forced to trade their brief taste of true freedom for guaranteed, lifeless paradise. What do y'all think Sunny would do with powers? Would she successfully navigate them, or would she lose her mind and fall prey to her own demons? Anyways, thanks so much for sticking with it. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like or comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Remember to check out my links in the description and the information I leave down there. But no one makes me